Hey guys, Brian from Workshop Addict. Today we're gonna to take a look at a very well-built solar generator. I don't want you to wig out on the price because you're gonna to have to pay for quality. Stay tuned. All right, let's dive deeper and more serious into some of the specs on this Blue Team Max Oak EB150 solar generator. They're also called battery-operated inverters. This unit is really built with some quality. It's 38 pounds, you have a metal container on the outside. It's built with LG cells on the inside. It's built under a 14.8 volt platform, which has 101 amp hours. That is gonna to equate to 1500 watt hours. So if you're doing the math here, it all works out. There's not a lot of marketing BS in here. You have a pure sine wave inverter on the inside. And this is where the marketing BS is not in this product because everything works out and they don't have huge numbers that sway away from everything. The battery output for the LG cells has a max output of a thousand watts, right? They have an inverter in here that is a thousand watt inverter that is pure sine wave again and has a peak output of 1200 watts. So they match the battery output to the inverter output, which is huge because we've looked at a lot of these before and they've had higher peaks or they've been able to say, hey, this is what the inverter is, but the batteries are just burning hot by the time you get to that point or run something there, or you get cutouts or you get crazy voltage spikes or drops. The marketing crap isn't here. They built this thing right. So you have the battery output that matches the inverter, which is perfect. You don't have a huge peak area. You have 20% there. So your 1200 peak for your watts in the AC area is not huge, but again, it's not rated crazy. I'm sure they maybe could maybe bump that up. We've run this at 1100 watts for about 20 seconds, and then things start to come down after the startup, and it's not had any issues. Battery life cycle on this, they call it 1000 cycles. I've seen a lot of companies that'll tell you, in a lab, we can get 2000 battery charges out of our batteries and then we see them in use and people complain after the first year they've owned the battery that battery's dead and they've maybe charged it 60 to 100 and some times and it's done. I think a thousand life cycle charges in this is pretty good rated. You'll see some rated at 500, you'll see some rated at 2000. I think a thousand is good in cutting out a lot of the marketing BS. Now let's come in and take a really close look at this and kind of go over front to back what you have. So there's not a lot to this unit as far as its build and what it looks like. You have a fan and two AC outlets in the back. We'll get there. But the main control board is up front and you can see we have color here with a battery fuel meter and the AC is on so it's telling us currently we're charging a DeWalt battery at 222 ish watts. Now we can turn the DC on, which is a push and hold, and that will tell us that we're charging the phone and charging a, a small light over here at about 17 watts. You have four 3 amp USBs, all 5 volts of course, and you have a USB-C 45 watt max output. So if you have a phone or a computer that uses that USB-C output, that's huge. You have a DC 12 volt plug here. It's call it a cigarette lighter adapter in my day, nine amps. So if you're running a refrigerator or anything on DC for camping, make sure it's not more than nine amps. And then the input here, you have a, you can input at, off this charger bank, which is nice. This little inverter or the uh, adapter will run from 42 volts, four amps. It'll take about nine hours to charge off this guy. And you'll notice we're charging at 160 watts right now, but we're depleting at 230, 40, 240 watts. So we will deplete the batteries on this faster than we can charge with this input. If we had solar panels connected up, you have to have a minimum of 16 volts for the solar panels to work. So we tried on a cloudy day with a very small set of solar panels and it was a no-go for getting there. 
I'll put a, a link in the description for what you should have or could use for this and what I'm going to pick up. Uh, so you got 16 to 60 volts with a maximum of 10 amps. That's going to be hard to achieve uh, depending how you wire everything up. Uh, but in its fastest configuration, you can charge this in three hours and in many ways keep up with or co close to keep up with everything here. You should be able to charge this max at about 600 watts, but realistically 500 watts is what you're going to be able to charge with. Now this screen is a little annoying to me. It turns on and off and you just have to push one of these buttons for it to come on. To turn the AC off or on, you push and hold. Same with the DC, same with the power. It's a push and hold thing, not just a touch. And you can probably hear the fan running at this point. You have a fan that is sucking air in the back and pushing it out the front. That happens anytime that you're using a significant amount of wattage and or charging. In, that, in our case here, it's because we're charging. Let's flip this guy around. We have too much connected. And we can look at the back. There's only two plugs back here. I'm going to put another link in the description for a way to solve that. But with a thousand watt maximum here, uh, I mean, you're not going out and plugging a ton of things into it. I've seen other videos online where people are putting tools into the back of this, especially circular saws. Uh, that's great to turn them on and let them run. Uh, you touch them into wood or you do anything like that and start actually cutting, you'll trip this guy. Uh, so you're not going to use it for things like that. This is going to be camping, small items, chargers, anything that you might need in a power outage situation. So again, here's the fan input, fan output comes out the front. Uh, let's hook some things up and look at what it actually puts out for voltage. All right, we have our man hand dryer in here. I'm going to bring this around so we can see some of the front because we can overload this very quickly. We'll hit the power here. We have nothing running. We have 116 volts currently. If I turn this guy on low, almost 700 watts. It's 1400 on high, but our voltage is staying steady. Let's just kick this guy up. It's going to trip it, but So you can see we went to 1200, maybe just a touch over, and it tripped everything at this point. So we can turn it on or turn it off and back on. And we're in business, ready to rock and roll. Nothing should change if we input and start charging. We have an error on our outputs also for DC, so we just reset that and they're back up and running. The voltage looks good and we've run this thing a long, long time. It's taken me a while to get this review up because I really wanted to put this thing through its paces and see what it'll do and try to get some different things working. Now, some of the big things that I see that this is capable of that some other units aren't, as long as you have the AC on in something plugged in in the back. Even if it's not drawing much power, it will stay on. We've had some things in the past that will click off after 20 minutes. This, no issue. So you can hook it to your sump pump, let this guy go, and it will continually stay running down there and have everything up to par if you were to lose power. And it's been raining here quite heavily, so our sump pump's working often. This had no issue, I ran it, overnight still had three quarters of a charge on it. That's great. That's kind of what we want. Uh, I hooked it up to our freezer and I thought, well, what's this going to do? We have uh, what I would call a medium to medium large freezer. No issue running that for 10 hours. Those freezers, uh, that's nice because in that case, you would have time to charge this guy back up via solar or run it with solar and at your freezer situation if you were capable of doing that and keep a freezer running. As long as you don't open the freezer, 
Another 12 hours of keeping it cold or closed, it's good. So in these power outage situations, it's awesome. You can't imagine what it's like to have all this wet hair, you know, and not be able to blow dry it. So you can use a home blow dryer and it has no issue, usually. Now you might have to go on low for some. As, as you can see, all this stuff is going to vary. You're gonna have a hard time with crock pots with a thousand watts. It's gonna depend on which one you have or the setting that you run it at. We have a Nesco and I was able to get that going at the 250, 250 degree setting before it would pop this. Coffee makers, probably not. Most of them you won't be able to, but there's a lot of things that you could use on this camping. And if you had a specific coffee maker that was under a thousand watts uh, for camping, I mean, that would be no issue. You get the bigger ones. It's definitely not gonna happen. There's a lot of things that you can compute for run times, but if you were to have this at a thousand watts full, like if we ran uh, a huge or a full hair dryer on this, you can run the battery down fairly quickly. It was about an hour and 15 minutes if you just ran this at 980 watts the whole time and it would be done. So at half battery, it seems to want to go forever and ever and ever. And if you're running it at something where the, everything can kind of come back as far as what it thinks the battery cells are capable of and give them a break, and they, as normal lithium ion batteries will do, they'll come back a little bit in their charge. This thing really excels and runs a very long time. And I credit that to a good quality build, good quality products inside in the LG cells, which are some of the top of the line cells that are out there at this point. Way too much information as far as I'm concerned in this video. If you need to watch some of it again, because there's a lot of stuff as far as outputs, voltages, watt hours, amp hours, how to compute a lot of things, I'm gonna put some links in the description for a lot of different parts that I think you'll want to have if you have this, including the solar package that I'm gonna order so that I have something around that will power this to what I will call about its max and allow me to use this in a situation where I'm either remotely camping in my trailer and can keep everything running as far as what I want for remote camping, which will be almost everything but the AC because I can run the refrigerator on LP. That works great in this situation. Uh, it would be good for tenting, but it's also gonna be good for in your house if you run out of power or you have a catastrophe where we don't have power for a while. This will take care of a lot of units that you need. I believe they're gonna come out with a larger one here. So we might have a video on that coming up soon. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Give us a like in this video. And as always, we appreciate your time. Have a great day.